think I could make this game work in the real world with people. So, Earth Ponies would only be able to use their legs to kick the ball around. Pegasus people would I maybe only allowed to use their arms, and they'd have to run around and guard the unicorns who are running around the outside of the circle, trying to get in good position so their Earth Pony people can kick the ball into the bucket they're holding. What do you think? Well, if the Pegasus are chasing around the unicorn, then who's defending the goal that's set in space that the Pegasus is supposed to be defending? The goal is with the unicorns. They're holding it. They're running around with the bucket. Then what's the bucket that the Pegasus is defending? Or did you just remove that for the sake of your human version? What bucket? The goal is the bucket. The bucket is what the unicorn holds. The Pegasus guard the bucket, but to guard the bucket, they're guarding the unicorns who have the bucket. That's how that game works. Um, no. <laughs> yes. In the series, the only time the bucket didn't move is when they were practicing, and they didn't have a unicorn yet. But in the actual game, the unicorns have the bucket and they move around with it. They just didn't show that in the show because they were acting um, on a 2D plane. Now in real life, everyone would be moving around in a circle. Otherwise, why make it a circle and not a elongated box? Trust me, I watched the episode two times. Because it's a made-up game. Yeah, I'm trying to make it real. Uh, well, we can talk more about this in the actual episode. Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 6, Episode 18, Buckball Season. So you didn't notice that the unicorns carry around the bucket? I noticed that the unicorns carry around a bucket, but I didn't catch that in the final match that Fluttershy and the other Pegasus pony weren't defending a stationary goal. Yeah. The Pegasus defend the bucket that the unicorns are carrying. The unicorns try to get in position so the earth ponies can kick the bucket in there. The Pegasus are there to guard the bucket and kick or toss the ball back down to their accompanying earth pony so that earth pony can hopefully get a goal. But yeah, getting to the actual episode. Pinkie Pie is always great. Though I feel sorry for both Fluttershy and Pinkie Pie in this episode. And how can Rainbow Dash and Applejack not get that those two don't do well under that kind of stress? Because we needed there to be a lesson. Therefore, we had to get all hyped up about winning and be serious instead of, oh yeah, let's have fun. Because you know you've pushed Fluttershy too far if Fluttershy is able to backtalk you. <laughs> uh, yeah, also the real star of the episode for me was snails. I don't think about anything. <laughs> uh, I didn't realize he was that talented with his magic, too. I know he's just levitating stuff, but he's really accurate with his levitation. <laughs> Which is rather impressive, and, you know, overall, we haven't really seen snips or snails in a positive light. That's why this was so surprising, and I'm like, oh, I like snails now. He's, he's kind of cool. He's a smart guy who seems really stupid. <laughs> now, the real question is, is he pretending to be stupid, or is just that the way he is? Because that's how he's smart. I don't really think about stuff. <laughs> or maybe he's just a savant in buckball. <laughs> Which is interesting because nobody outside of the Apple family had any clue what the game was. Mm -hmm. And I knew that was coming at the beginning of the episode. So I got one question. Yes? What's Buckball? <laughs> mm -hmm. It's all that coming from a mile away. So yeah, I really enjoyed Pinky when she was happy in the episode. I also liked the one part where she wasn't happy because of the reactions and also Fluttershy at the same moment of the... It's not good to be in the zone! <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to be in the zone because the zone is a terrible place. <laughs> oh, Pinky's and Fluttershy's expressions, especially Fluttershy's expressions, were the, the best in this episode. They were marvelous. Also, Andrea Lintman outdid herself in this episode. Pinky and Fluttershy sounded really good, and they sounded like completely separate characters. Because sometimes... Fluttershy will link over into Pinkie Pie, or Pinkie Pie will link over into Fluttershy. Especially when Fluttershy gets higher and more energetic, she starts to sound a little bit like Pinkie Pie. 
But that didn't happen this episode. It was solid across the board. I always wonder, you know, when a voice actor is playing multiple characters within a series and having to switch back and forth, if they're ever done wrong by the script, where there were script changes, where a line originally belonged to one character and then was shifted over to the other character. So you mm. practiced it one way, and then finally it ended in a different way. Hmm. Well, at least it's not as bad as some 80s cartoons where you're like, wait a minute, that's Raphael's voice coming out of Dolantello. <laughs> Uh, Super Mario Brothers had it beat <laughs> because <laughs> totally different. I can't even remember which character it was now, so I'm going to make it up. But basically, Mario's voice coming out of Peach's mouth. <laughs> and yes, I know in that series she was Princess Toadstool. Been in the modern Mario too long. It's Peach now. Mm -hmm. Actually, I think technically she's still technically Princess Toadstool, but her name is Peach. So... Yeah, but I think they just call her Princess Peach now. It's kind of like uh, what happened to, I think it was Bowser. Bowser had a different name at one point. I think it was actually King Koopa. Mm -hmm. But back to that MLP episode. I actually, the first time I watched this episode, I actually couldn't watch the trading montage because I knew it was going to happen. So I kind of skipped it. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, groan, skip. Uh I did actually watch that particular part, so I was like, yeah, I need to watch this for the review in case it's something that actually was nice that happened, and then, like, eh, it's pretty much what I thought, <laughs> except for snails being awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and as you can tell on screen, that's who I'm drawing. Uh, big surprise. <laughs> uh, so you figured I'd draw him, huh? <laughs> well, yeah, it was obvious about 15 seconds into his appearance in the episode. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of enjoyable parts, but like I said, the training particular part, just I couldn't watch it the first time through. <laughs> and it's just funny, the second time through, that all I could think about was like, so how do I make this real? How would humans play this? Actually, it is possible. But there's actually a moment when I paused the second watching and went, wait a minute, I could make this real. <laughs> humans could actually play this. <laughs> Uh, and I actually laughed a little bit maniacally after that. Well, so long as the humans don't have to stand back to back to kick the ball, I don't think that would go very well in a human version for the buck off. I was thinking they'd be face to face and it would be kind of like how soccer st starts when you drop the ball and whoever gets it first. So, I think we should move on to more details about your thoughts and probably a whole lot of nitpicks along the way. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so this sport is an Apple family thing, therefore not widely known outside the Apple family. Why would a Apple family sport require a unicorn and a pegasus? I went back and looked at, through pictures of the Apple family. Tell me how that happens in something that is so Apple family centric. And since you have to get non-family members involved in order to play the game, why hasn't the game spread? Maybe gained in popularity? Or at least be known about a little bit by the occasional sports enthusiast? Mm-hmm. Though, it might be the same problem that the main six have of not being well known. <laughs> I mean, I know it's just in recent seasons where everyone's like, Oh yeah, these people saved the world! Kind of thing. But in the first couple of seasons, it was more like, Oh, these are just normal unicorns and pegasus! And earth ponies! How nice! They haven't done anything special. Turn around. In the background, they save the world. Turn back. Oh, they're still there. <laughs> <laughs> maybe the same problem. Even though everything's magical and we have a dragon that can send messages, maybe that's the fastest form of messaging in that world and everything else is probably shipped through a really slow version of mail or something. <laughs> but stuff still has to make it through and around eventually. I mean, how else are the Daring Do books so popular? How is Hoofball so popular? And if the game absolutely requires a unicorn and a pegasus to play, why does Applejack make such a big deal out of the fact that Brayburn is bragging that he got a unicorn and a pegasus on his team? That's a basic requirement for the game. You take one of each category. So that all that means is that he built a team. That phrasing should have been, he was bragging about how awesome the unicorn and the pegasus he got for his team are. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. It's like, 
oh, buckball. This sounds like a sport played by earth ponies who kick a ball. And someone apparently is cheating a little bit because he now has a pegasus and a unicorn on his team. Oh, joy. No wonder Applejack's annoyed, but then they find out that's the basic sport? <laughs> that doesn't work. That's actually how you play the game. So what's the big deal that he got a pegasus and a unicorn? Did there used to not be any in Appaloosa? I didn't go back and watch over a barrel to check. Actually, I don't think there were any pegasus or unicorns. Maybe a unicorn, but I don't think there were any pegasus. And the actual bragging should have been more along the lines of what you said, but also of, yeah, these really talented pegasus and unicorn. They're so awesome. They're doing so well in the, you know, stuff like that. Well, I think my favorite part overall had to be where Picky Boot Pie was like, they do realize we're not unicorns, right? <laughs> I completely forgot about that part. But yes, that was really awesome. Though a little technical thing that kind of bugged me is Pinky Pie was talking into her hoof. W wouldn't she have moved her mouth the other direction towards the person she's talking to? Because her mouth shape was indicating that she was kind of cheating out towards her hoof when she should have been cheating out towards Fluttershy. Yeah, because usually when you put your hand up to block the viewability of your mouth, it's so that the person you don't want to know what you're saying can't read your lips. Mm -hmm. Also, the expressions on Rainbow Dash's and Applejack's face when, oh, good, because I left my unicorn costume at home. Don't you have like an emergency stash around here somewhere? <laughs> um... Yeah, but also it's like, what, do all Earth Ponies want to be unicorns? Because, okay, Big Mac dreamed, literally, of being a magical girl-style alicorn, and his Ogres and Obliettes character was a unicorn. Pinkie Pie has a unicorn costume that we've never seen. So, what? <laughs> yeah, I've never heard Applejack refer to it, though, or, um, Apple Bloom. So, may, well, it's just Pinkie Pie. She may have a unicorn costume for a costume party. And she probably has a Pegasus costume, too, and I'm sure she has an alicorn costume. Mm-hmm. And we already know if the comics, or if it was ever referred to in that par episode where we saw her party basement, that she probably has costumes of her friends as well. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, that's not creepy or anything, but moving on. And Snails was great in this episode. I thought he was going to have a little more of a role than just kind of chilled out Zen Master. But I would like to know who he was supposed to be delivering water to, and what he was going to do about that water delivery since he caught the balls in his water buckets. So one, the water was contaminated by the balls, because, you know, people had their hooves on them and they were bouncing on the ground and stuff. And the balls went into the buckets, which means some of the water had to splash out. So you're delivering less than the amount of water that you were supposed to. Maybe it was for um, watering plants, which would explain why he wasn't worried about it. Also, he doesn't think. He stated this. <laughs> I know. He doesn't think about anything. Like, ever. Yeah. <laughs> I even like how when Pinkie Pie said, yeah, I know. Don't think about it. Yeah, don't they? Oh! <laughs> uh, he was great in this episode. He was just the right amount of comedy relief and also the amount of, oh, he's really cool. Wow. They're actually getting to making me like side characters I didn't really like before. We'll see what happens. And then another nice thing was how Applejack and Rainbow Dash were both willing to step aside for what was best for the team instead of them wanting to win wanting the team to win, and trying to make choices that were best for the team, instead of being so self-focused. Yeah, character growth. Who knew? <laughs> <laughs> but then they kind of went into that overbearing, okay, you're playing, but I'm still kind of in charge. I'm like, didn't the two of you just go through this with the derby? Uh, it's a little different. I think what happened is, even though they were willing to step aside, they were still thinking of, this is how I would handle this which doesn't work for Fluttershy and Pinkie Pie. At all. And you guys have been friends for a long time, so you kind of should have had that realization a little sooner. Yeah, they kind of had this thing where they thought their way of doing something was the only right way. But yeah, it was similar to that lesson. Yeah, but the overall theme of 
this should still be fun. You should be doing things because you enjoy them and not letting yourself get worked up and psych yourself out and, you know, push yourself into failure. Because I always do worse at formal shoots. Casual club practice, I'm usually pretty good. Put me at a fun shoot and suddenly I'm out hunting for arrows in the grass. Even though just the previous day they were all going into the target. I was going to make a joke there about me being the target, but I've never made her that angry. <laughs> also, I don't have the right kind of arrows for that. Also, my arrows are very unique. It would be too easy to identify. <laughs> it was also kind of surprising how quickly Ponyville got worked up for the game and the match and, you know, Ponyville team, let's go. It's like, really? Because Pinkie Pie and Fluttershy were starting to feel better because they're like, oh, it won't matter. Nobody's heard of this game. It'll be fine. And then, okay, now we're miserable again. Mm -hmm. That train scene freakout was a really good scene. <laughs> Excellent scene. Also, if Buckball's such a unknown thing, how did they get together all those outfits, face paint, and hats? <laughs> Those hats are so weird. Also, when do we have time to pick team colors? Because that wasn't exactly the color jersey that Snails was wearing. It wasn't the color of the jerseys that any of the unicorns that were trying out were wearing. Those poor unicorns. I mean, the whole episode was a setup for everyone who was trying out to fail. You know, because that's how children's episodes of sports tryouts go. Like, oh, everyone's failing unless you're a main character. And the, if there's something about a reason the main character should be on the team, then they'll make it by the end of the episode. But if we're looking to fill out a team roster, everyone who tries out will fail until someone just walking around the periphery suddenly is amazing. Though even with all that, it's definitely a fun episode. <laughs> yes, even knowing how it was mostly going to go, it was still over all very well handled. The lesson wasn't too heavy-handed, and as you can tell from what I said earlier, I can really empathize with Pinkie Pie and Fluttershy mm -hmm. in this instance. Yeah, it's really hard to get those nerves down just before you do something, because I've acted before, and I know what it's like to um, go up on stage and suddenly your brain goes off. Oh shoot, I have no idea what my lines are right now. This is also why it's good to have good teammates. This includes plays, because the other actors can go, shoot, he forgot his lines. I know what his lines are. I can feed his lines to him in character. Yes. And there's also special phrases that you can use in stage acting to cue your teammates in. Like saying, now where was I? Is a cue for your teammates to give you a line. <laughs> Mm -hmm. In this case, Rainbow Dash and Applejack should have gotten the clue of, yeah, this ain't working. Because <laughs> they were doing terrible during doing your training method, so that should have been a big clue. <laughs> like, immediately. Because, okay, they were awesome to start with, so why did they even need to do your drills? Couldn't you guys have just played some more? Wouldn't that have been really good practice? Yeah. And that's another thing, the drills did not work for their style of play. Not just the stress it gave them, but it doesn't practice any of the skills that they were showing that they were good at, like Pinkie Pie's footwork on how to handle the ball, and how Fluttershy was using her tail. Yes, so now this is the second pony with active mane and tail abilities. Because, you know, Pinkie Pie has had prehensile hair in the past. Mm-hmm. So... Is there more, or should we start wrapping things up? Well, you know me. I'm not really sure if I want to say this or not. <laughs> <laughs> because it is technically a children's show. But for those who are into that sort of thing, there were so many flank and tail shots in this episode. <laughs> that I am sure that for that reason alone, it will probably be a fan favorite. <laughs> yeah. And then there was me who was like, I didn't notice that at all. <laughs> I think it's also because the second time I was watching it going, how can I make this into a real game? I know I can do it. <laughs> uh, I'm tempted to sit down once I find some time and write up paperwork on how to play this game in the real world. <laughs> you have a lot of other things to do before you get to that kind of free time. I know, I know. 
Well, shall we move on to our final thoughts? Mm-hmm. Overall, I thought the episode was really nice. The lesson was good. The execution was pretty good. Little errors here and there, like it was just for the Apple family, why are there Pegasus Unicorn involved, as you stated? And also the cringeworthy training scene for me, at least it made me cringe. But overall, I really enjoyed it. The scene on the train was excellent, and wow, snails, you rocked it! Yeah, it was a fun episode. It was nice to have another episode that's a little more low-key slice of life, not, oh my god, this magic is out of control. Oh no, an invasion. The series does a good job of balancing between high-key and low-key episodes. Had some issues, as previously stated, but if you look back over our recordings, when do I not? <laughs> I think it's almost getting to the point where you don't need to state that part anymore either. <laughs> like, when do I not have? <laughs> yeah, that's probably getting more repetitive than my nitpicks or our intro. <laughs> uh well, I hope you've enjoyed our thoughts on My Little Pony, French Biz Magic, Season 6, Episode 18, Buckball Season. Yes, and I've been very worried about saying that title. I'm like, there are so many ways that that could sound horribly wrong. Thanks for listening. What's one more channel on your account? Please subscribe. If you enjoy Lex's art, you can find more on DeviantArt and Tumblr. Really like Lex's art? He also has a Patreon page and does take commissions. Check the link below for commission availability.